you don't always need the pastor up here because we believe in a priesthood of all believers. So who noticed that I'm wearing the same stole for Storm Sunday than I'm wearing for Cosmos Sunday? I wore this last week because it kind of looks like a storm from a distance. But if you look at close, <laughs> it's actually Doctor Who's TARDIS flying through space. <laughs> <laughs> so, abstract art can serve some great purpose at times. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then we get that argument that we hear about the gospel. The conversation is getting more and more difficult in verse 41. The crowds who have made such efforts to find Jesus after he crossed the lake begin to grumble. MSRB, as we heard it translates it as complain. Just as the Israel in the wilderness had done in Exodus. Done quite a bit, actually. Their complaint here in verse 42 focuses on the difficulty caused by their own presumed knowledge of who Jesus is. They conclude that he's not come from heaven because they know his parents. Familiarity is breeding contempt. Literally. One who has been among them cannot possibly be what Jesus claims to be. Now John is using very symbolic and figurative language to try to explain Jesus' origins and just how Jesus relates to those who are seeking him. Jesus cannot possibly be from heaven, let alone God, for we know his parents. You and I can no more be spiritually engaged or have an eye for the mystical because we are from, where are you from? Yeah, Massachusetts. Oh, heavens forbid. Where are you from? Connecticut. Where are you from? New Jersey. New Jersey. Well, evidently nobody's from here. <laughs> oh, we got a few. There we go. I knew there were a few. Just picked the wrong ones. I mean, I, I'm from Detroit, and... When was the last time something good came from Detroit? <laughs> Except for Lay's potato chips. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm straight. So this is where I break from the, a restrictive reading. I believe if we read this text in the context of John's Gospel, it leads to a unique place. Remember the opening of John's Gospel? Another mystical phrase, almost poetry. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. Without Him, not one thing came into being. Through the opening words of John's Gospel in today's text, I see a place where we can honor all faith, and all people, and all of creation. For if everything came into being through Christ, then all, each one of us, are of Christ. Jesus is our bread from heaven, but there are other wise sources of spiritual food who come to the earth and other practices, and believers find their spiritual food, if you will, who also were created through the Word, therefore are of Christ. Though we have our differences among ourselves as UCC, as Methodists, as Unitarians, and among Christians and non-Christians alike, we, as people who follow Christ, in a world made up of 4,200 some religions, according to some estimates, nobody's actually counted them all, but there are roughly 4,200 religions in the world. And the word religion is sometimes used interchangeably with faith or belief system, but religion differs from private belief. What's the difference? Religion is a public act. It's the public aspect of your faith. There is a belief of the golden rule that exists through all faiths, that runs through the most of them. Just as all are created through the word, just as the Hebrews ate of man in the desert, which literally translates as like that, all of creation, the stars and the planets, life here and elsewhere, were created through the word. We have eaten of spiritual word food that comes in many different forms. 
Dr. Ernest Holmes wrote in 1948, we should waste no time in futile arguments as to what religion or spiritual outlook is right or wrong, but gladly accept the evidence of anyone's prayer and faith as a demonstration of a person's belief. Too much time is lost in arguing whether or not one's philosophy is the only correct one. Her religion, the only true one. His method of procedure, the only effective one. Let's leave these arguments to the contentions of the smaller minds and try to find the threat of truth. The threat of truth running through all systems. Let's build on the affirmative and forget the negative. Now don't panic, I'm not negating Christianity. You're in the right place, you're in the right pew, you're where you need to be, and where you're called to be, just as I am where I'm called to be. But what is it we are called to? We're called to love all, and so it runs through the face and practices of many in the world. Sikhism says, Sikhism says, be not estranged from one another, for God dwells in every heart. So Erastianism says, human nature is good only when it does not do unto another whatever is not good for its own self. So a lot of devil negatives, but you get the idea. Islam says, no one is a believer until you desire for another that which you desire for yourself. And Judaism says, what is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That is the entire Torah. The rest is commentary. Go and learn. Okay, that was Rabbi Galel said that, actually. It's in the <coughs> Talmud. Danism says, in happiness and suffering, in joy and grief, regard all creatures as you would your own self. Baha'i, blessed are those who prefer others before themselves and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I still don't recommend that because we're really lousy at taking care of ourselves. Do unto others as you would like to have them do unto you. What I am saying is that the Gospel reading in John's whole Gospel points to a Christ that is larger and broader then we really understand. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was of God, and the Word was God, and all things came into being through Him. Well, that kind of puts away any chance we have of diminishing anyone. It also puts all creation on the level playing field. All creation, and that means not just the lonely blue marble we are living on, but it includes all that we, we can and cannot see, all the cosmos. From the great out there to the tiniest speck that we can see using a giant electron microscope. There's probably something beyond what we haven't discovered yet, whether we're going smaller or whether we're going broader. The cover of your bulletin today shows a nebula on it, and it's often referred to as the God's Eye Nebula. All the cosmos. A Christ that rules over all the cosmos, our a cosmic Christ, a Christ that is bigger than any one faith or religion. Richard Rohr explains it this way, understanding the cosmic Christ can change the way we relate to creation, to other religions, to other people, to ourselves and to God. Knowing and experiencing the cosmic Christ can bring about a major shift in consciousness, like Saul's experience on the road to Damascus. You won't be the same after encountering the risen Christ. Christianity is just beginning to learn and understand this. Yet if we allow ourselves to flow with this cosmic Christ, that all things are created through, then we can begin to understand and accept Jesus as bread from heaven. Or accept Jesus as the good shepherd. Or accept Jesus as a gatekeeper. Or accept Jesus as the way. It doesn't what, matter what metaphor speaks to you. We're all called in the same direction to the same behavior. They all describe all these metaphors. And our own faith describes a Christ that is so much beyond our own understanding. The cosmic Christ is divine presence pervading all of creation. Since the very beginning, Richard Boyer explains, my father Francis of Assisi intuited this presence and lived his life in awareness of it. 
Later, John Duns Scotus put this intuition into a philosophical form. For Duns Scotus, the Christ mystery was the blueprint of reality from the very start, John 1 1. Teilhard de Chardin brought the insight into our modern world. God's first idea was to become manifest, to pour out divine, infinite love into the finite. The Big Bang is now our scientific name for that first idea. And Christ is our theological name for that first idea. Both are about love and beauty, exploding outward in all directions. Creation is indeed the body of God. And what else could it be when we think of it? End quote. Jesus tries to explain it. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. If I have gone too far for you, tell me so. It's okay. If I have not gone far enough for you, please challenge me so. But I truly believe that John's Gospel message today, this Cosmos Cosmic Sunday, is one of inclusion. The same inclusion we proclaim daily that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. It is also why we proclaim this is an open table when we serve communion. This table belongs to no one and everyone, for it is God's table. If you are a child of God, you are welcome here. Our challenge as Christians is to be welcoming table at all times. We are called to be hospitable first and then go further. Christ is the gate through which many shepherds have gone. Christ is the word through which all creation comes. Christ is the spiritual truth that transcends all comprehension. For the truth is as vast as the cosmos. Now we just have to honor that in each and everything and everyone. Today's psalmist proclaims what a wildly and wonderful world, God. You made it all with wisdom at your side, made earth overflow with your wonderful creations. And oh look, the deep, wide sea, brimming with fish past counting, sardines and sharks and salmon. Ships plow those waters and the leviathan, your pet dragon, rocks in them. All creatures look expectantly to you to give them their meals on time. You come and they gather around. You open your hand and they eat from it. We have, over the past few weeks, afforded God's creation. We celebrated Ocean Sunday. The song of the waters remind us the taste, the moisture of the morning, smoother than the best red wine, toast the lifeblood of the planet. Here to God's wet and wild design, sing a song of flowing waters pulsing through the veins of the earth. We celebrated Flora and Fauna Sunday, and the song of the wild calls us to, will you come back with me to the birth of the earth, before all is life formed and evolved? Will you sing with the heavens amazed at the sight, a planet with secrets to unfold? Will you praise and be amazed with eyes as wide as a child's? Will you praise and be amazed and sing the song of the wild? We celebrated Storm Sunday in which we sang out our faith. Put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the water. Put your hand in the hand of the one who calmed the sea. And take a look at yourself. And then you can look at others differently. When you put your hand in the hand of the one from Galilee. And now on this day, we celebrate all the cosmos we are called to. The cosmos hails the Christ, the one who reconciles all things, till all creation rises new with healing in her wings. As Christ unites the universe, restores its earth once more, a cosmic song reverberates, a rich symphonic, symphonic score. May we always seek out that cosmic Christ from the grandest to the smallest. May it always remind us that we are all born of that stardust that happened in the first bag through the Word and of the Word. Each and every one you encounter is a bit of Christ. May you be Christ to your brothers and sisters. Amen.